The first place I start is always by asking my clients what the goal of their website is. So what do they want people to do when they land on their site? For most of us, that's going to be applying to work with us or scheduling a sales call. But depending on your business, it might be something like signing up for your email list or buying a low ticket offer. Once you have that goal, you can then figure out what pages do I need on my website to move people in that direction? What does the copy need to say to get people to the right place? How can I set up the entire journey from landing on that first page to actually hitting my goal, reaching my goal? So that is a big piece of getting a website to convert is to know what you actually want people to do. And then you can dive into the data to see if they're doing it and what you might need to change. Welcome to the Online Creator Podcast. I'm your host, Kim Tradewell, founder of May & James Co., a creative digital company. Building a brand is about human connection. I am here to help you articulate your story through strategy, development, and execution. I believe that anything is possible at any age and at any stage of business. The only limits we have are the ones that we place on ourselves. I want you to feel like you are supported, not alone, and that you are able to take action quickly. On this podcast, expect to hear interviews from a wide range of guest speakers, bite-sized solo episodes from myself, bingeable episodes that will give you insights, different perspectives, and actionable strategies to help you reach your goals personally and professionally. Now let's get into the show. Welcome back to episode 55 of the Online Creator Podcast. And today I get to speak with Samantha Mabe. Samantha is a creative director and designer of Lemon and the Sea, designing custom websites for expert service providers who desire to make great first impressions and convert right fit leads faster. With her signature framework, Samantha has designed and customized websites for all different types of industries. When she's not digging into design and strategy, she loves reading. Her goal is to hit 200 books this year and adventures with her kiddo and trying to keep up with her Netflix queue. I thoroughly enjoyed today's conversation. Samantha definitely brought some golden nuggets that if you are a business owner listening to Up Your Game, and to start converting and using your website to make offers and have sales in your business, which is the goal for all of us, then you definitely want to listen in today. We get into all things power and leveraging website traffic, analyzing return on investing in the right design for your website, making informed choices and based on that valuable data and what data actually looks like. What are the top three things that you should be looking at? So welcome, Samantha, to the show today. I know you will enjoy the conversation. Hello, Samantha. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast today. Thank you for having me, Kim. Yeah, I'm so excited that you're here to talk all things designing websites that convert because if you have a website that's just sitting there and not doing anything, it's kind of like having a hobby podcast, you know, having a hobby website, I imagine is similar when you're comparing the two because you want it to really work for you. So I'm so excited that we're going to dive into that deeper. But before we do, I love starting our conversation with how have you leveraged your voice to build your business and brand over the years? And maybe it's looked a little different from where it started to where it is now. It's definitely looked different. I started my business back in 2015 as just kind of any graphic design that people wanted to offer. I was figuring out the online business space. I was married, but I wasn't yet a mom. And so I was just kind of trying to like get a message out there that you can grow a business the way that you want to, which has stayed the same. Actually, I was looking at some of my posts from like the very beginning of business and the overall message has stayed the same, which is probably good. But once I became a mom in 2019, I have really been talking more about building boundaries in business and sharing the way that I have built a business that supports my family. So I take every Wednesday off to be with my kiddo. And I think that has resonated with a lot of my clients because they're moms too. And 
we want more freedom in our lives. And so that has been really big for me to implement myself and then to talk about and really make that clear to my clients and to the people that listen to my podcast or follow me on social media. It's like I'm owning that part of my life instead of trying to hide it away and pretend like it's not taking up my time. I find that interesting that it takes a little bit of time for us to get into this online space to figure out uh, what we want to start sharing and what that looks like and what really resonates and engages with our audience. And now you mentioned your podcast as a platform to share your voice process to I want to make sure I get the right process to profitability. Mm -hmm. You've had that for a little bit now. How was that an easy process to start a podcast for you? Did you always know audio was where you were more comfortable? Like how did you how what was that journey like? I started it in 2017. I went on this really small, like mastermindy retreat, and everybody there had a podcast. And at the time, I was really tired of writing blog posts every week because they, I was doing a lot of research. A lot of them were tutorial based, so it was a lot of effort. And I talked to everybody there and I was like, well, maybe a podcast is the way to go about things. I can record it. I can put it out there. I can have guests on and really kind of build my network. And so I took a course to get it launched to figure out all the tech, which was probably one of the best investments I have made. And from there, I my first season was like 100 and something episodes. And then I took a break because it was 2020 and things were crazy. And I had a kid at home, took a really long break and then came back doing things seasonally. So I've kind of had to figure out my flow there as well and what makes sense for the way I have to work. But I love the audio format because it's it's so much more casual. It feels like a lot less work to me. Yes. Yes, it does. And I love working with clients in seasons because it just seems to make sense when we sit back and take a whole look at uh, what their business plan looks like for the year or breaking it into quarters and what are they launching and what are they working on in the moments because it needs to be weaved in there with it to make sense, to make it part of your business plan. I also love that you touched on at the beginning, it was about building your network and connecting with people and and that's evolved now from the sounds of it, right? So do you still invite guests or is it more this season's about digging into more solo episodes and what you do and how you support your ideal listeners and clients? I think I have tried pretty much everything. So I've always had both solo episodes and guest episodes, but the frequency of them has changed a lot. So I started out that I'd have like one solo episode for every three guest episodes then I was doing every other. Then I did like two solo episodes and one guest episode. And this season, I feel like I've done a lot more because I launched two episodes or two episodes a week. So it's one solo and one guest episode. But I, that's a good rhythm for me to really talk about what I want to talk about. We're kind of created mini seasons with like mini series with different topics so I can bring on my guests. I'm really particular about who I bring on now, so that has helped a lot in kind of refining my process and knowing what we're going to talk about. And then I get a lot of time to share website design and strategy, but also just how I'm doing business and what my life looks like and really let people kind of get behind the scenes. I love that you mentioned the mini series because I'm just starting to tap into that with my own podcast and helping clients create that as well, because I feel like those can really evolve and look at the data. And I know we'll be getting into that, but you can look at the data that's which episodes are more engaged in those mini episodes. And then, you know, next year in the next season, revisit them, tweak them, change them. But they're still already like the bulk of the work is already done. And, and I think that's how like once you start getting into a rhythm with podcasting in your business, how it can really work for you instead of you putting like all this time and energy into one thing and it's not seeing the results that you want. So I love that you mentioned that. And one more question before we move on to your expertise in web design. Have you noticed that it's opened doors or opportunities with the speaking and how you're speaking? So I guess two parts. Has your speaking gotten better? Are you proud of where it started and where it is now? Because I know I am and I'm still, I 
like a rookie compared to your experience in podcasting. Let's start there. It definitely has improved. So right now I'm editing all of my own episodes. And Mm -hmm. at this point, I don't even have to. I So I use Descript to edit and I can see my transcript. Mm -hmm. I don't even really listen to myself because I know that I'm not having weird pauses or saying an ah so Mm -hmm. much especially on solo episodes. So it has improved tremendously as far as the way that I speak and how I've been able to clearly articulate things that I want Mm -hmm. to talk about. So that has definitely been a journey. I haven't listened to my old episodes, but I'm sure that they are not nearly where I am now. I always tell that to clients. I'm like, don't worry about your first ones. It's like writing your first blog post. It's like doing your first video on YouTube. They're not going to be great, but they're a place to start. And that's the whole point of owning a business and running an online business is to just start the process of choosing a platform first and then starting the process and building that muscle. So that's super cool. So the second part of that question was, has it created any opportunities for you from, you know, opening this door of podcasting and sharing your voice? Lots. So I have lots of guests who have either, they have podcasts, They've started podcasts after I have interviewed them because it goes back so far. And so it's really easy to reach out and connect with them and then be a guest on their podcast or talk to their audience, you know, do an email swap, any type of those collaborations, because we already have a relationship and they already know that I'm excited to promote what they're doing. And I clearly have been doing this for a long time, talking about the same thing. So it's definitely helped me in those collaborations and just using the people that I've created relationships with to then grow my business. Okay. I think this completely leads into the next question so well. Your expertise, like I mentioned, is creating and designing websites that convert and are marketable. Why is that important in a business? Why we feel like we've got a decent website. How do we make it more marketable and why is that so important? What does that look like? I think the first thing to remember is your website is the place that you own online. So when people talk about social media, you've probably heard we don't own our social media. So your website is the place where you can actually control what you're saying, how you're saying it, what is published. And so I think that's just a really good place to think about. I like to think about it as the biggest piece of your marketing funnel because everybody's going to come back there eventually to work with you, whether they DM you on Instagram or they hear you on a podcast, they've got to come back to your website to click on that apply button or click on that add to cart button. So you want your website to be set up that when somebody gets there, it makes sense for them to continue that journey with you, that they don't get lost, they don't get confused. Like it's very clearly a piece of everything else that you're doing so that they can then become a client in your business. I got so many questions. (laughs) (laughs) How do you simplify the process? So when a business owner comes to work with you and they're just like overwhelmed with, okay, listen, like it was a big job to just get my website developed, whether they did it themselves, piecemealed it themselves, which, oh my gosh, I hope they didn't. Or they were able to hire someone to really get it, you know, even like structured in the best way possible to just get started. How do you simplify the process of making sure that you are converting right fit leads? And what does that even mean? The first place I start is always by asking my clients what the goal of their website is. So what do they want people to do when they land on their site? For most of us, that's going to be applying to work with us or scheduling a sales call. But depending on your business, it might be something like signing up for your email list or buying a low ticket offer. Once you have that goal, you can then figure out what pages do I need on my website to move people in that direction? What does the copy need to say to get people to the right place? How can I set up the entire journey from landing on that first page to actually hitting my goal, reaching my goal? So that is a big piece of getting a website to convert is to know what you actually want people to do. And then you can dive into the data to see if they're doing it and what you might need to change. 
honestly, I feel like strategizing every piece of your business, like breaking it into components is so undervalued and so important. It's a piece that I build in with my clients. If I do have a few retainer clients on board, we do monthly strategy calls because that changes and evolves. And I'm sure that happens with a website as well. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, private audio feeds. This means you can take the audio from content you've already created and share it with your paying customers. With Hello Audio, you can create private audio feeds in minutes. Check out the show notes for the link or go to helloaudio.fm for more information. How often do you recommend taking a step back and looking? Like I mentioned before, does it happen with when you're launching or depending on your new projects or your offers? Is it whenever you're sitting back and looking at your whole business strategy, that's when the website design needs to come into play? It does. I tell people to look at just a baseline analytics once a month and just make note of them somewhere. And that's a good place to just see the trends and see what's going on. And then if you've got something like a launch of a new service or just a relaunch of something you've already done, you want to be in there more often because you want to make sure that that extra traffic that you're bringing in is getting to where it needs to go. There's nothing broken or like weird going on in the back end. So that takes a little bit more effort to dig in. But on a regular basis, you should be looking at it once a month to make sure things are working. And then if you've got sort of something special coming up, you can go in there a little bit more often. I don't think more than once a day if you're in a launch is helpful because things change so rapidly. Um, if you've got like a two week launch period going on once a day, like same time every day, let it go for a couple of days and just kind of make note of what you're seeing. Yeah, for sure. That totally makes sense. What are the most important things when you're looking at your analytics for your website? Are you telling clients to like really keep tabs on? Them? Is it page views? Is it like what part of the Google Analytics or analytics platform should people be looking at? The easiest thing to start with is to look at the number of website visitors that you have. So that's going to tell you how many people are visiting your website. And the reason I like that one is not because I care whether you get 10,000 visitors a day or two visitors a day, but because I want to make sure you're actually getting traffic to your website. The best website in the world isn't going to do anything for you if nobody sees it. So we want to make sure people are finding you. And then I like to look at my top performing pages. So which ones are the most popular if it's something like a blog post or a show notes page for your podcast, that gives you a lot of information about what content is bringing people to your website. And then I also really like to look at the search queries. So the words that people are using to find your website. And that will that tells you two things. So it gives you data on what you are showing up for. So if somebody types in website design, it shows me, are they even seeing my listing? And then it tells me how many people clicked through to my website for that keyword. And that's going to give you a good idea of, are you showing up for the right terms? Do you need to start creating content about other things or change the copy on your website to better reflect what it is that you're doing? So those are the top three that I like to look at. Uh, if you want to look at another one, bounce rate can be really important. We just want to make sure people are staying on your website for as long as possible because Google and search engines do take that into account when they're looking at the search ranking that they give you. Okay. And then one follow-up question for that, because those are some really great nuggets of wisdom that you just yes. left there for <laughs> everybody. But what I always find this question interesting, what is a good bounce rate then? Because it always looks so foreign to me when I'm looking at that. I have not found a really solid answer for that. 
So okay. most people will tell you, I, from what I have seen, people will say like 40% is good. And I have some of my clients' websites that hit that. Mine mm -hmm. is much higher, but I still have people who listen to the podcast and then reach out to work with me. So I think the biggest piece is just to make sure that it's staying consistent for you. And if it's super high, like above 70%, then there may be something that you can do to just make sure there are buttons and links for people to go to places right. that you're not missing those on your design. No, that totally makes sense. And that's easy, an easy starting point to at least dig into that data and take a look. When I work with clients too, we always look at like website traffic to the podcast page, right? So mm -hmm. Because I mean, obviously I'm hoping that the goal is for most people that do have podcasts that are aligned with their business, that people are coming back to the website. So I think that's an important piece that you just said right there. People like coming to that page, all the things to look for that you had mentioned. Is there any, from working with clients, has there any, been any like crazy misses that you're just like, oh my gosh, like this is insane. Things that people are constantly missing that they really should implement right away that you have seen over the years? I think the top two are very common. One is they have too many links, especially in their menu, where there are just a million different pages and nobody's going to know where to go. And the second one is they forget to look at their mobile design after they do the desktop piece and they have no idea that their mobile design is, does not look good. And that's where 40% or more of your website traffic is coming from, especially if you have a podcast and they're coming from your podcast player, they are going to see the phone version of your website. Oh my gosh, that's so, so powerful right there. I love all the great nuggets that you shared. If someone's listening and they're just like, oh, I need Samantha in my world, how do they find you? How do they reach out? All the good things. I am pretty easy to find. So my website is lemonandthesea.com. My Instagram is lemonandthesea. It's a very unique business name. So nobody has taken any of the usernames yet. And then I've got a freebie on my website that goes through five minute updates to get higher conversions on your website. They're just really simple things you can do. And that's at lemonandthesea.com slash five updates. I think that's something that everybody can implement right away or check out for sure. Because again, if you build it and expect people to come, that's not the case. It's like a podcast. If you build it and put it out there, you still have to market it. So yep. <laughs> all the good things that are developed around it. And that's why it's nice to hire someone to at least be able to do a look and see what's going on. Do you do those? I didn't double check that. And I didn't ask you before. Do you do website audits? I do. I have a website audit that I go through like every page of your website. And I kind of have like on the back end, I have this huge spreadsheet that my husband helped me get all the tech set up. And mm -hmm we just go through everything and kind of take a look at all of those pieces, which is a lot of fun for me because I like to dig in and see what people are doing and where they can improve. And most of them are fairly small tweaks if they have a good foundation to start out. But they can make like vast improvements yep. in, in conversions. And again, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. The the day, right. <laughs> so I think we shouldn't be afraid of data, just like we shouldn't be afraid of numbers in our business. We need to use data to really build the business that we are hoping to build, just like you said at the beginning of the show, to create, you know, the lifestyle and the business that we want. So those are all really, really important points. Before I let you go, I love doing a quick speed round with my guests just to kind of get to know who you are on, uh, on a, with a different lens. So what, I guess, first question, what do you do to brush off like a stressful day? Because I get it. I have two teenagers. It's a lot. A lot's going on and working full time from home. Yeah. And I know you said you created boundaries, but what do you do to brush off a stressful day to be able to show up and be creative? Because I can only imagine how creative and fun you can be when you are inspired to work on a website and work with a client the next day. Yeah. I, my go-to is reading. I have a goal to read 200 books this year and I am on track. So that is what I spend my time doing. 
That is incredible. Okay. And so follow up question with that. Do you actually read books? Do you listen to audiobooks? Do you listen to podcasts? What's your jam? I read books, usually on my Kindle. I listen to audiobooks at least two times speed or I'll never get through them. And then I do listen to some podcasts. Usually I'll kind of batch all of the podcasts that I listen to and I'll get them all done at once and then I'll go back to another book. And one more follow-up question because I always find this interesting. Do you read for entertainment or self-development or a little mix? Only entertainment. No business books. (laughs) Get out! That's totally shocking to me. It's so funny because I need to do a better job of reading just for entertainment. I used to before I started this online business and now I'm like, Oh my God, learn, learn, learn. I went on a family vacation in February this past year and I was like, nope, my only goal is to read one book for fun. And I did it. I did accomplish it. But (laughs) that's so crazy. That's so crazy. So when do you like spend time on learning? Do you like do like summits online? Like how do you do more expansion in your business and in your world? I so a lot of the podcasts I listen to are business podcasts. So I do that. And then I have just gotten very deliberate to figure out what I want to learn and I'll go find a course or somebody who's teaching it or a summit. I did an AI summit that was super helpful. So I'm just trying to focus on the things that are important to me in my business and kind of advancing what I want to advance and then trying to leave everything else to the side so I don't get distracted. And that is probably the most important piece you should take from this conversation because I think so It's so crazy. Like as an online business owner, there's so much noise out there and so many shiny objects. And just like you said, like the AI is new. And if you're not learning that, you're behind the game. And it's so hard. But I mean, take those small pieces, learn that, move on and don't worry about the rest of the noise at the moment. You can always expand that later. But yeah, I think that's so, so important. And last question is there a piece of advice that you would give yourself now that you've had, you know, these years of experience under your belt? Is there something that if you were just starting fresh tomorrow and you didn't know all those good things, is there something that has really stuck by you that you're like, maybe you received some advice from another mentor or just something that you've learned over the years that has stuck with you that you can share? I think the biggest thing that I have learned in the past and really started to implement recently is that I am trying to kind of stay in my own lane. I don't follow a lot of other website designers because I don't want to feel like I'm competing with them. So I, when I talk to business people, it's usually people outside of my industry and then I can just kind of do my own thing. I can see what the trends are just because I'm on people's websites, but I don't feel like I have to keep my prices the same as everybody else or my process or I never have to worry if my language is going to feel like it's copying somebody else's because I'm not looking at what they're doing. I can really develop what I want to do and how I want to run my business. Yeah, that's so important because again, it's all the noise out there, right? I mean, it's okay to check every now and then to see what competitors are doing, but honestly, you need to guide your own ship and you need to do it in your own way. And that's why people want to work with you. And I love that you um, use podcasting as your platform for people to get to know who you are and understand what you do in that unique way. I'm very passionate about it. I love it. And I know you are too. And I love that you use all of this data-driven knowledge to be able to create that business that you want to live for you and your family. So Thanks for inspiring others and thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast today. I do appreciate it. And I'm so glad our paths have crossed and that we've met in this online space in these different networking ways. It's so crazy. But I'll have all the great details on how to get a hold of Samantha Lemon and the Sea in the show notes. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening into the show. It truly means so much to me. You can check out the important links mentioned in today's episode in the show notes, and please join the conversation over on Instagram at me and James Co. I love hearing from you. There are so many great conversations coming up, so please make sure you are subscribed to Apple or Spotify or any of your favorite media players so that you don't miss out. And if you enjoyed the show today, please share and leave a review and a rating because it helps us so very much. 
Until next time.